All right, let's get started for the week. What is up, everyone? I'm Blake, I'm your host. You know me at this point, hopefully. If not, welcome. So we need to have a skit this week, and I figured why not do something that's been going pretty well for me on TikTok. So if you don't know, you probably don't know, um, I've been making videos on TikTok, and recently some have been getting pretty popular. And one of them, the most popular ones, have been what your favorite musical says about you. And also, if you want to follow me on TikTok, here it is right there. So just go ahead, and if you want to do that, that'd be really wonderful if you have TikTok. I don't really, do any of y'all have TikTok? Maybe not. But anyway, so I figured I'd transpose that to here for our skit this week and do what your favorite opera says about you. So let's get started. You have a libido that is going to last well past your 60s, and I don't know if I'm proud of you for that or scared of you. Just because you have a cold does not mean that you are the protagonist of the world. You have a lot of patience. I cannot imagine what it's like to be like, hmm, I have a lot of spare time. You know what I'd like to do? Sit for 16 hours and listen to people with very wide vibratos. You and everyone else, you are not special. If you're not in some kind of spat with someone at any given moment, then it's just too boring for you. You need to get in a fight somehow. Why? Y'all know there's like 17 plot holes in this, right? Some may call you chaotic, but that's what makes you fun. Girl, what did your ex do to you? We get it, you're quirky. Stop talking about this being your favorite opera all the time. If something happens too easily for you, then you just like simply don't trust it. Like it was just too easy. There needs to be like 17 steps for you to attain your goal. Like that's just how it is. When life gives you lemons, you run away and hide in your room for hours at a time. Otherwise you would jump off a building. Can you not just date someone? Do you really have to play games for like three months before you make it official? Nothing warms your heart like a cold Russian anecdote, and that translates to every part of your life. You have 100% keyed your ex's car before. You know what wets your whistle? Gay undertones. You're the funny one of the group, but the problem with that is that when you get actually mad, no one believes you and you get even more mad. everybody and welcome to week 11 of Music and Martinis. I am your host Blake Jennings and would you look at that, that's my degree from Texas Christian University. A lot of people were getting really tired of that little hook right there, that was a little spot. People kept thinking they, they had like dirt on their screen. You don't have dirt on your screen, you're just fine. Um, it's just a hook to hold this up. I just didn't want there to be a reflection normally because you see there's like a little reflection there. But I guess we're going to find out this week if y'all like the reflection more or if you like the little speck more. because. Um, it's kind of a big glare, but it's the only way I can get good lighting from outside. So, um, hey, look, that's you. See that little, little speck? That's you! How cool. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started, you guys. So our lineup this week is Hannah Wolf, Emily Harmon, Angela Gooch, and Matthew Larson. And we have another special guest. It's, it's me. I'm, I'm the Aria this week. It's, it's me here. More of my face, yay. <laughs> Woohoo. So first up is the Sea Glass debut of Hannah Wolf, who is singing Le Te? Le Te? Le? No, it's not Let. I know it's not Let or Le Te. I think it's Lete. Um, it's French, it's for summer. I'm just not good at French. So um, I guess we'll find out in the song. So take it away, Hannah.
Such a beautiful song and like so beautifully done, Hannah. Oh my gosh, it makes you almost forget how horrible this summer's been. Minus the show, it's been awesome. I love it. You love you guys. Okay, yeah. So next up is me singing Il Lacerato Spirito, which if memory serves me right, that's Italian, which means that's probably an aria. I think actually it is an aria, so I guess it's time for some stick figures. Y'all know the drill. Blake Jennings, Space Baritone, hire me, share this video. Here's some stick figures. This week's opera is Verdi's Simon Bocanegra. So the time is the 14th century in Genoa, and the main characters are Simon Bolgenica, Maria, other Maria, you'll find out soon, Fiesco, Gabriel, and Paolo. So prefacing all this during my research, I have determined that this is by far the most unnecessarily complicated story to cross my path yet, so I'm going to give you a bare-bones boy-meets-girl narrative of this story. It's frankly barely even worth it to learn their names, because half of them take an alias by the end of the epilogue, and frankly, you could not pay me enough money to give you a fully detailed description of this story. Go to Wikipedia. Okay, so prologue. Boy meets girl. Girl gets pregnant. Girl has baby. Dad locks girl away because illegitimate children are a huge no-no in the 14th century. Girl dies. Why? Who knows? knows. Dad is sad and swears revenge on boy. Boy tries to get girl back, but uh-oh, she's dead. And double uh-oh, the child is missing. Boy becomes magistrate of Genoa. Don't ask. Act 1. New girl has arranged marriage but loves other man. New girl tells boy. Boy and new girl find out their father and daughter. Boy tells arranged marriage guy to screw off. Arranged marriage guy plots to steal new girl. Act 2. Arranged marriage guy poisons drink. Boy has drink. Other man throws a jealous fit about boy. New girl explains that boy is her dad. Everyone understands and boy and other man go to fight the rebels that just so happen to be outside currently. One of which is arranged marriage guy. Act 3. Arranged marriage guy admits his guilt while being executed. Dad comes back and tries to attack boy. Boy explains that new girl is dad's granddaughter. Dad cries and they reconcile. Boy dies from that poison in Act 2, but not before naming other man as new magistrate of Genoa. The end. Here's a song from the show.
Gomi! Great job. That was that was almost a year old, so I definitely have learned a thing or two since then. But you know, for 2019, good singing. Uh, yeah, overall, right? I don't, I don't know, maybe. So next up is our martinis portion of the week, and Nancy is back again from Del Mar Bar and Bistro to teach us how to make a Far East Manhattan. Never even heard of that. I am so excited to see what it's comprised of. So take it away, Nancy. Hello everyone, Nancy from Del Mar Bar and Bistro in Chatham. Coming to you today to make the Far East Manhattan. Today's ingredients are bullet bourbon. We have uh, orange bitters today. We have a house infused fine tawny port, which we infuse with oolong tea. And we use a verna, which is a Sicilian Amaro. We are gonna start with three ounces of bullet bourbon. To that, we are gonna add three quarters of an ounce of the infused pork and three quarters of an ounce of the Amaro. We are going to add a few drops of our orange bitters. One, two, three. And for bourbon, we always stir. Serve that in a coupe glass with a orange twist and make sure you actually twist it to release all those good oils. And there you have it, the Far East Manhattan. Oh my god, that looks so good. It almost makes me want to go to Far East Manhattan if it wasn't written with COVID. Manhattan's... Wait, no, is Manhattan doing better? I don't... I've been away from the north so long. I'm just like in rural Texas. I have no idea what's happening like anywhere, frankly. So next up is Emily Harmon singing Wildwood Flowers with Ukulele. That's, I think, a ukulele debut for Musica Martinis. That's really cool. Can't wait to watch it, Emily. Take it away. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm taking a break from opera this afternoon because it's too hot and I feel like doing something else. So uh, instead, I'm going to be playing my first ever song on ukulele. This song is called Wildwood Flower and was originally made famous by the Carter family. Uh, it's one of my favorites, so I hope you enjoy it. was blue. 
its dreary hour. How I long to see him and regret the dark hour. He's gone and neglected his pale wildwood flower. I swear, ukulele always has a way of just like making all your worries like go away. <laughs> And then they stop playing, and then the, the worries come back. But that's enough existential dread on my part, because it's time for our favorite part of the week! Self-promotion! Wear a mask. So this week's self-promotion is brought to you by Patrice Tiedemann and Matthew Larson, our very own artistic and musical directors. I swear, at this point, like, we have so many guests doing it, we need to have, like, a competition of, like, who sells it best between, like, all of us, and, like, you know, we'll get a vote ready. It'll be great. Hi, I'm Patrice Tiedemann, artistic director of Seaglass Theatre Company. And I'm Matthew Larson, I'm the music director of Seaglass and we would like to thank our sponsors that uh, keep this program rolling along. And that's Symphony Music Shop in New Bedford. And the South Coast Community Foundation. And as you know, we have a weekly tip jar, and that tip jar benefits our singers only. And so if you could find it in your hearts to uh, drop a dollar in there, that would be wonderful because... A hundred would be better. <laughs> in the end of September, on September 25th, that's our finale show, we will be dispersing the tip jar again to all the artists that have appeared in August and September. So that would be wonderful. We, we could give them a little send off for the fall. Yeah. And um, the fun doesn't have to end on September 25th. We will be telling you more about what's coming up next because Seaglass is going to stay virtual through the rest of 2020. So we'll be telling you more about that, so stay tuned. Thank you both so much. That was such a great job. You know, I would donate money myself if I wasn't a singer and had no money. So anyway, our final performance is Matthew Larson and Angela Gooch performing Dance Hindu. Um, it's French again. I, they gave me French twice this week. It, it's pretty rude, frankly, because, you, you know, I can't pronounce it very well like this. Who can? You know? I mean, give me a break. Anyway, it's a four-hand piano arrangement, and it's going to be really, really cool, and I'm so excited, so take it away, y'all. be really cool seriously amazing job you guys so proud of y'all like Robbie. so that just about wraps it up for the week so once again i'm your host blake jennings thank you all so much for coming like comment share all that good stuff donate if you can we really appreciate it and um wear a mask you know there's so many options you know i, I showed off a little bit today you got your colors you got your basics you got your patterns you got your pastels you can do anything you want just wear one for the love of god just wear one <laughs> okay bye you guys Have to be serious. I don't have to be serious. Okay, fine. Just be yourself. I'll be myself. Don't be Renee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she's singing at the Met and I'm not.
What time is it? I saw you push record, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way I can get you to talk. I, I have very good hearing. <laughs> Click.